In this video, we're gonna be taking a look at purlin noise. Purlin noise is a really commonly used technique in procedural generation and also broadly in computer graphics. So the Perlin algorithm was invented by Ken Perlin in 1983 and he actually won an Academy Award for it in 1997. So big up to you, Ken, and thank you for your contribution to the field. So we're gonna be taking a look at how to use this in a pretty traditional context of height map generation. So I'm spawning a grid of cubes and then using a Perlin noise texture to choose what areas are high and what areas are low. And that is actually how we generated the kind of undulating roofs effect in our procedural cityscape. Let's check it out. In a previous video, I walked you through an example where we're using Perlin noise to generate a city. In this video, we're gonna dive a little deeper into the Perlin noise topic. So Perlin noise is a really interesting topic that is widely used in the world of procedural generation and in computer graphics. What it allows us to do is to generate kind of organic, noise textures that we can scale and scroll through and use for all kinds of naturalistic, for lack of a better term, results. So here we have a simple kind of terrain-like situation where we're generating a sort of plane of cubes, an undulating plane of cubes, right? So these are all individual cubes that are having their height offset based on values sampled from this noise texture that you can see here. So if we fly up a little bit, we can see some correlation between the texture and the elevation of what we're doing. And coincidentally, this is also how Unity's terrain system works, right? We take a grayscale texture and offset the vertices of the terrain mesh based on the values stored in the texture, right? So same idea. So this is basically a kind of a DIY cube terrain generated based on Perlin noise. Now, let's take a look at the script that is doing this. So this script is actually what's also being used to create the heights for my randomly generated buildings in my larger scene, but I wanted to show it in a simpler situation so that we could kind of understand it more deeply. So here's the component. We have a texture size along the X and Y, right? This is a, a size in pixels, 256 by 256. We have the choice of whether we wanna randomize the noise offset. Now what this is about is we're scrolling through the texture and sampling the texture at different points, right? The noise is actually not random itself. So the way that we achieve kind of random style results is by sampling this big noise texture at different levels of zoom and also at different offsets, right? So choosing a random offset is a nice way to get some kind of random like results and also adjusting the noise scale, which I'm doing here via this slider and you can see the values changing in the inspector, we can also get these kind of much more noisy random results, right? So you can think of this as kind of zooming in and out on this texture and you can see what that looks like as I do it. Then we have this Perlin grid step size on the X and Y. So this is because I'm sampling the texture at a lower resolution, right? You see this is a 40 by 40 grid of cubes which corresponds to this step size, right? So I am not generating a 256 by 256 kind of high resolution landscape for lack of a better term. I'm generating this kind of stepped low resolution version, right? So I'm actually choosing a step size and that allows me to sample the texture at steps, right? This is gonna end up being 256 divided by 40 is something like every five and change pixels. This visualization cube is just this cube prefab that's being spawned. The height just allows us to modify how much, it's basically scaling how much height offset is being applied based on the texture, right? We can make it less if we want or more. And then we have this UI image, which we're using just to visualize the texture just for, for kind of learning purposes. So let's actually take a look at the code here. So if we jump into Visual Studio, we see, right, here's our fields that we already covered. And then we also have a private, texture 2D field called Perlin texture, right? And that is the actual texture that we're generating and sampling. So in a wake, I'm actually making a static instance of this class so that we can use it as a singleton just to make it easier to sample the texture from anywhere in the project. 
I know people are opinionated about singletons, but this is not managing state or anything complicated. So I think it's an appropriate use of the technique. Then we have our generate function, which kicks off the generation, calls generate noise. And also if visualize grid is turned on, it'll visualize the grid, basically generate those cubes. So let's take a look at this generate noise function. This is really where the magic is happening here. So first of all, if we're gonna randomize our offset, we're gonna generate a random vector two, right? Which is gonna be our offset starting point where we're sampling the noise field from. Then we're generating a new empty texture, right? Of the size X and Y that we specified in the inspector. This is 256 by 256. Then we have two nested for loops. We're looping over and calling set pixel, right? So set pixel allows us to write a pixel into a texture. Here, we're doing it at the X and Y coordinates defined by the nested for loops using this sample noise method. And let's take a look at that method. So here is sample noise. So sample noise, what this does is it takes in X and a Y coordinate, and then it calculates a coordinate at which it's gonna actually sample the Perlin noise. It's gonna convert those, cast those to a float. And that's basically the X input divided by the size of the texture, multiplied by our noise scale, and with the addition of the offset. So this is really where we're picking where in our noise field are we sampling from. And we're doing that for the X and the Y. And then we're gonna create a float called sample. And here we're actually gonna call the mathf.perlinnoise helper function that Unity provides, which allows us to sample the Perlin noise at the X coordinate, at the Y coordinate, and store that value. This is gonna be a floating point value between zero and one, right? Which corresponds to a grayscale color. Store that in our float. Then we're gonna generate a new color, which is called Perlin color, and that's gonna be equal to a new grayscale color based on our sample. We're gonna return that and write that into our texture, right? Using the set pixel method. So we're gonna write in this generated noise pixel, basically. Then we're gonna apply the texture, right? To apply the changes to the texture. And we're going to update our UI texture with the Perlin texture. So now we've generated some noise. We've looped over our whole 256 texture, put in random noise pixels. We've generated some noise to work with. Now we can visualize our grid. So if we go down, basically we're gonna create a new game object to hold all the cubes that we're gonna spawn, parent it, that's fine. Then we're going to use two nested for loops here to loop over our grid step size, right? So this is 40 by 40. So this is a 40 by 40 loop. And then we're going to spawn a cube at each step in our grid. And the position, this is kind of, it's we're spawning the visualization cube and the position is gonna be based on X. So the X coordinate in the, the spawn position is just gonna be the X from the loop. The Z position is gonna correspond to Y in the loop. But then here, this is where we are actually sampling our noise and applying it to the height of the cube that we're spawning, right? So we're doing this using this sample stepped method and we're passing in our X and Y coordinates, which are basically our coordinates in world space as defined by this loop, right? So what we're gonna do is let's take a look at sample stepped up here. So sample stepped takes in a X and Y integer, and then it's gonna calculate the grid step size, which is going to be 256, the Perlin texture size, divided by the Perlin grid step size. And it's giving us like a five and change. And we do that for the Y as well. Then we're gonna call Perlin texture dot get pixel, right? So this is where we're now getting a pixel out of the texture. We're gonna use mathf.floor to int, right? To convert our slightly messy float that we got by our division back into a hard value. I'm just flooring down, basically rounding down to an integer. I don't care that much about super precision here. It's okay. So I'm gonna floor to int for X, floor to int to Y, and then I'm gonna sample the grayscale value of that pixel, which is gonna be a float, right? So that's gonna give us our sampled float value, which is gonna be a number between zero and one. We're gonna return that and use it to multiply by our visualization height scale, 
and to set the height of the actual cube that we're spawning. Then we do some, some mumbo jumbo here to parent it and just move it into position. I just had to move things around a little bit to get them to align with the other objects, but it's, it's not so important. It's basically just offsetting the world space position to match the grid of the buildings. So this is basically all you need. If you wanna be able to generate a Perlin noise texture, sample data from it, spawn objects into the world and generate terrain or, or whatever other kind of procedural content you want. In my case, I used it to generate the randomized height of the buildings. And this is the idea here, right? You don't have to just use this for a height map. You don't have to just use it for kind of linear, obvious stuff. There's a lot of ways you can use these kind of noise textures. And hopefully this kind of gets you thinking about some of those uses. So thanks so much as always for watching. If you have any questions, drop me a comment down down below. Make sure you're subscribed so you can get notifications about future videos and I will see you all next time.